Welcome to episode one of my Guitar Iceberg series. Today I'll be looking at the first tier level? I don't know. Do icebergs have tiers or levels? Let me know in the comments. So for those that don't know what an iceberg is, a trigger warning for Titanic survivors, it's essentially a tier list where the least complex parts of a niche are at the tip of the iceberg and the most complex, the most obscure parts are at the very bottom. This iceberg contains different techniques and opinions that guitarists tend to develop as they advance on the instrument. In any case, today I'll be explaining the techniques and opinions that are at the tip of the iceberg. Let's go. Open chords. Open chords are basically chords that are a mixture of fretted notes and open notes. They are hard and they need to be mastered basically immediately so that you can learn to play basic songs and also get the strength and coordination necessary to play other stuff. For some reason, beginners are often taught really uh, inefficient chord shapes. For instance, this G7. I just don't like it. I don't think it sounds very good. I think it's hard to play. Learning these chords and how to switch between them is a giant pain in the ass, but it has to be done because so many other chords on the guitar are based on these basic shapes. For instance, the bar chords. A bar chord is when you take an open chord shape and add a bar that is stretch your first finger across the strings, enabling you to move the chord up and down the strings. Like this A chord. We can take the A chord shape, add a bar, and then move it up the neck. We can also take chords derived from the A chord, and like with the A minor, A7, and A major 7 shapes. The hardest of these beginner chords, I would say, is big F. I've been playing for a long time, and this chord, I think, is the thing that took me the longest to learn how to play cleanly and clearly. I remember my dad showed it to me, and it took me about two weeks of trying it every single day until finally I got it. And basically, once you get it, you have it forever. If you can get past Big F, your success on the guitar is all but guaranteed. There's really not too many harder things you'll have to learn, in my opinion. This takes us to palm muting. This is a pretty easy technique to master. Here's how I teach it. You take this part of your hand, you karate chop it onto the bridge. Then you play some open strings to see how muted it sounds. If you want to further dial it in, you can move your right hand a little bit to the left and try that. You can move your hand a little bit to the right and try that. And sort of split the difference to figure out what you like. A lot of riffs will use palm muted notes mixed with non palm muted notes. This is a very common technique in, in, in thrash metal and lots of rock music styles as well. Um, sometimes also chords will be strummed with a palm mute, like in Photograph by Ed Sheeran. Strumming with your thumb. You really can't strum with your thumb because the nail will get caught on the string on the upstroke, so maybe they meant plucking with the thumb. Some beginners try to play with the thumb instead of a pick, mostly because it feels like it's easier because it's attached to you. You don't have to learn how to hold it or anything like that. In the long run, you really got to use a pick. That being said, one of the greatest guitar players of all time did not use a pick. Wes Montgomery used his thumb. <laughs> Over time, he developed a callus on his thumb and it gave it sort of a pick-like sound when he used it, but throughout his career, he just used his thumb. If you've never seen him play, I'd recommend looking it up. It's pretty wild to watch. Finger pain. Yeah, it's gonna hurt for a while. Your fingers have to form calluses, uh, and until then, it's gonna be kind of painful. You're pressing your fingers into cold, unforgiving steel strings. After a while, though, the nerve endings in the tip die, so even if the calluses kind of go away, you still won't feel anything. So um, when I touch the, the, my fingertips, I don't feel a thing which is kind of weird. I would say this takes about, I don't know, a month of consistent practice before you start to get enough calluses to make it comfortable. YouTube instructional videos, mm, interesting. This is honestly such an advantage that I did not have growing up when I was learning the guitar way back in 2005. Back in my day, all we had was ultimateguitar.com, which still exists and it still sucks. Anyways, guitar instruction on YouTube is excellent these days. There's lots of people, including yours truly, giving free guitar instruction online. There really isn't a better time to be a guitar player than right now in 2024. It's pretty incredible, actually. Anyway, if you want to support someone that's creating great free guitar content, please hit subscribe and like this video. Thank you very much. The capo is used to change the key of a song and preserve the sound of the open strings while you do it. So if you have a song in the key of C, but it feels too low when you sing it, you can put the capo on and use the same chords, just in a higher position. It's also useful if there's two guitarists and you want to play in the same key but use different chord voicings to get a kind of a richer fuller sound so you're not just playing the exact same thing the other guy's playing. It's very easy to start using the capo just make sure you clamp it as close to the fret as possible and then retune once the capo is on because it usually makes the strings go a little bit sharp. Then when you take it off you need to tune it again. There's lots of different kinds you have a clamp style capo, you have screw-on capos, even a spider capo that allows you to capo individual strings sort of simulating an open tuning. I don't have one. But here's a picture. Simple melodies. Playing simple melodies is a great thing for beginners to do. And there's a few ways to do it. One would be to use this book, How Learn a Guitar Method, book one. Make sure that's in this shot here. Yeah. 
If you want to improve and make lasting progress, a resource like this that takes you through a lot of simple material quickly is a good thing to use. And it teaches you how to read music, so win-win. There's another way to play simple melodies, and that's by using your ear. You can use your ear to pick out simple tunes on the guitar, like maybe Happy Birthday, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. All you have to do is start on an open string and just fish out the next note on the same string, or maybe for an extra challenge on the open string below it. It may feel a little silly to play children's songs on the guitar, but chances are they are songs that you know really well by ear and that you'll be able to figure out. After a while, you'll start to get sort of an intuition for how these melodies lay on the guitar and you can start trying more advanced stuff. Like for instance, instead of starting on an open string, you could start on a fretted note, perhaps the fifth fret B string, and pick out the melody from there. Remember that music is appreciated orally, 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 and the better you hear, the better you'll get. Major and minor scales. This one is not really a tier one skill for me because it's actually pretty difficult on the guitar in terms of the coordination that you need in order to, to play a major scale. Um, if I were teaching a major scale to a beginner, I would probably show them like a C major scale or an open D major scale, A major, basically all in the open position just to avoid having to do these big stretches between the pinky and the pointer. Starting with piano lessons. I'm not sure what this one is suggesting. I certainly wouldn't start with piano if the goal is to learn the guitar. But if you have any training on the piano, it's probably going to help. Um, before I learned the guitar, I sang in choirs, I took piano lessons, so by the time I got to the guitar, I already had sort of an intuition for how the notes would fit together. I knew the names of the notes, the sharps and the flats, stuff like that. Um, these are things that are pretty difficult to learn on the guitar uh, and very, very simple to learn on the piano. That being said, at the beginning of your guitar journey, you can just kind of ignore these things for the, for the time being. And then, once you reach a more intermediate stage, you might just look at how these things are laid out on the piano, just to get sort of a logical overview of how things fit together. Um, because the guitar is very illogical and the piano is, is, is very organized. And I think this could lead to a lot of aha moments, especially if you're curious about how things fit together. Pick scraping. I don't really understand what this one is doing here, because I don't know how many beginners are necessarily taking or learning ripping solos on the guitar. But basically, a pick slide is when you take the pick and you slide it down one of the lower strings with the grooves on it. Um, and that gives it this really intense scraping sound, sort of like a sort of like a jet engine or something like that. It, a lot of times it's used as a transition effect, like in the intro to Crazy Train, or as a solo technique to start or end a solo. I think it maybe would fit better in the second or third level. Guitar Tuna. Guitar Tuna is an app for tuning the guitar. I think it can be used for other instruments as well, but I'm not sure. It makes a little sound when you're in tune, which is uh, which beginner students love. Maybe I'm old school. I really prefer to use some kind of reference pitch to tune my guitar. Otherwise, I feel like I'm disconnected from the process in some way. You should definitely use a tuner when you're starting out just to make sure that the end result is the result that you want. But I'd also recommend learning some kind of method that makes you use your ears as well. If you're interested in this, I made a video and you can click it right here. Hopefully, I'm pointing at the right spot. Phone recording. I don't know what this means. I'm recording on my phone right now, so I don't really understand like why this is in the first tier. Maybe the person that made this iceberg could explain it to me. Let's move on. The minor pentatonic. Now here is a beginner friendly scale. This is like a before and after for many guitar players. Like before you learned it, you couldn't solo at all. And after you learn it, you can now kind of solo. All you need to know is the root note of the key that you're in and the, in the first position of the scale, and you're good to take a ripping solo it will probably be super good. All right, that wraps up this level of the iceberg. I think it accomplished what it was supposed to. That is to say, it contains all the most obvious beginner sort of parts of the guitar playing niche. In the next video, we'll be moving down to level two where things start to get a bit more complex. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, or interesting, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series. They'll be coming out every Friday until I'm finished with the iceberg. Take care and thanks for watching.